Hey guys, welcome. I got something slightly different to cover in this video from the typical stocks that I cover. I want to go into the story behind an ETF on this one. Uh, the ticker symbol is QYLD. I really like this one. It's very cool because it invests in tech stocks, the biggest stocks on the NASDAQ 100, and yet somehow it manages to pay out a really, really juicy dividend yield of almost 12%. So I'll go into how that works, how they do it, what's the nature of the investment, what are some of the downsides that you might not immediately see. And I want to explain particularly why I think now, right now, is potentially a really, really good time to invest in this thing. Probably one of the best times ever um, in the history of this ETF. So I'm going to go into all of those details. Um, let's do it. Okay, so basically this thing is what we call a covered call ETF. And what it means is that they are holding the uh, shares of the companies that are part of the NASDAQ 100, but in addition to holding the shares, they are selling call options at slightly higher prices than they paid for the shares. This generates additional income for the fund in uh, the form of option premium that basically then they pay directly out to the unit holders. Now, you know, selling covered calls, whether you do it yourself or whether it's done as part of an ETF, it has a potential downside and that is that it puts a uh, limit or an upper bound on how much uh, participation or capital gains you can participate in as the underlying stocks rise. If they rise too much, then your options contract will get exercised and those shares will get called away. And this is exactly what happens to QYLD when they write these options contracts. They're sort of writing them at a strike price that's high enough that they're hoping that the stocks are not going to get called away. And that's really when the magic happens. If the stocks don't get called away, then they just recognize all of that option premium as income and pass it along to us, the folks that buy the ETF. So really, when you think about a covered call ETF, it makes more money than simply holding the underlying if the underlying stocks stay flat, go up just a little bit, or if they go down to any extent whatsoever. In either of those three scenarios, you're better off having sold those calls than not. The only place where you lose out a little bit is if the underlying stock prices actually shoot up to the moon. You know, there's a really, really fast rise. It's going to hit the strike prices of those call option contracts and the underlying stocks are going to get called away. Now, when that happens in an ETF like QYLD, the company that's actually managing the fund, they just immediately turn around and they rebuy uh, the stocks that were called away at a slightly higher price, right? So, you know, they still get to keep the option premium, but the upside was capped by the strike price where they sold those calls at. So really, you know, whether you want to hold this thing, it sort of depends on the market conditions. And that's something I want to touch on a little bit later in the video and explain how you can take advantage of that in particular. Okay, so you know that said, let's take a look at what this actually does for. So like I said, the yield on this thing as I record this video, it's about 11.8%, so almost 12%. It's paid out monthly, which is really attractive to folks that are looking for current income. And that's what the product is all about, right? It's designed to attract people that are looking for a, a fairly reliable income stream. And in this case, it's a very, very healthy income stream, right? 11.8% is way more than you're going to get if you invest in a typical dividend stock. And at the same time, you are investing in, you know, some of the best stocks in the NASDAQ 100, uh, you know, tech stocks, the, the, the big fang stocks, all of these companies are part of that index. And this fund is buying a slice of those things. So if you like those tech stocks, if you like those holdings, if you're bullish on them, and if you like the idea of getting paid 11.8%, this thing is going to be fairly attractive to you. Now, if you're in the US, if you're an American and you're holding this thing, you're going to have to be aware of the tax consequences, assuming you hold it in a taxable account. You know, if you're holding it in some sort of tax sheltered account, no worries. But if you're holding it in a taxable account, you need to pay attention to the taxation of these distributions. They're not bad. You know, basically the option premium, the additional option premium that's generated is for the most part treated as a short term capital gain. Uh, there's a little bit of the distribution that's classified as a long term capital gain and then there's also a portion that's classified as return of capital which is basically a tax deferral of what you'd otherwise owe so from a tax standpoint it's not bad either you know um, not quite as nice as a qualified dividend and not quite as good as a long-term capital gain you know it falls somewhere in the middle for folks uh, like myself I'm in Canada you know so if you're an international investor uh, buying this thing then chances are depending on your country it's going to be treated as straight investment income so you're probably 
probably going to pay um, you know close to your top marginal rate on any income that you make on this thing so in if you're in a situation like that like I am it sort of makes sense to potentially hold this in a registered account you don't need to worry about any of that um, you're just going to be able to recognize those distributions uh, right into your tax sheltered account and and participate in all of that 11.8 percent which is pretty great Okay, so how has this thing performed? So it's been around for a while. You know, it was launched in late 2018. Um, you know, it went from uh, $25 at inception to the price we see today, which as I record this is around $22.50. So basically you look at that, you know, multi-year history, the price has actually declined a little bit. Um, and so you might scratch your head and think, well, okay, that's terrible, right? You know, it, it went from uh, 25 bucks to 22.50 over that many years. But, you know, if you had held through all of those years, you would have just kept raking in that very, very high yield of roughly 12%, and you'd probably be quite happy with that. So let's take a closer look at the mechanics of how that works, right? So it, we can compare the total return here in this chart. Uh, versus the NASDAQ 100 itself as a benchmark. And you can see the difference in return, right? So from a total return perspective, if you look at uh, that 12% payout plus the price decline, uh, what would that have meant? Well, it wouldn't have done nearly as well as simply holding the NASDAQ 100. So a couple of things about that. One, uh, the last several years, you know, tech stocks have been in an incredible bull market. Uh, is that going to continue into the future? Don't know, but you have to recognize that this was potentially a period of very outsized gains for the companies that make up the NASDAQ 100, right? That was the period of time when all the FANG stocks just experienced massive, massive growth in uh, price. So, you know, it basically it's very, very difficult to have beaten uh, simply buying and holding the NASDAQ 100. Really those, those several years, were the worst worst possible period, I should say, for uh, a financial product like QYLD. Because remember, like I said, uh, it limits your potential upside. So as those stocks in the NASDAQ 100 experienced that, that crazy increase in price, uh, it kept getting called away, right? And so the, the fund managers were, were losing their shares and rebuying them back at uh, increased prices. And then their only compensation for that was the covered call premium income. And that situation did not uh, uh, beat or even really compete with a buy and hold situation uh, of, of the QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 index. Now, you can see here too in this chart what that means from a total return perspective. It was actually roughly 9% annualized if you spread that return evenly over the last several years going back to the, the latter part of 2013. So, you know, if you think about a holding period where you would have bought it back then, you sold it today, you'd be sitting there with a 9% compound annual growth rate. So you wouldn't have, have recognized the whole 12% as income. And, and that's where I think a lot of people get tripped up when they look at these covered call ETFs. They only see that fat 12% yield and they don't really look at it from a total return perspective and some people will argue that uh, the total return doesn't matter to them as much that they're only looking for that current income and you know I, I guess I would agree with that I think that if your strategy is to buy this thing and hold it forever uh, literally until you die and then your estate can deal with the taxes right so if you're a hundred percent committed to that strategy then yeah I, I do think it's valid to ignore the total return and simply focus on that income and I think that's particularly relevant to somebody that is very close to retirement, right? They're looking for that retirement income. They're looking for the reliability of that income stream uh, and they still like tech, right? So if those things are true to you, I think that's actually a really good trade-off. I think it makes sense to accept a lower total return in exchange for higher current income. That's exactly what this thing is meant for. And if that describes you, then I think it's a good setup. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about is uh, what I mentioned in the intro, which is that this right now may be a particularly good time to buy into QYLD. And the reason I say that is that I believe that the NASDAQ 100 is likely to be near a top, right? We've seen a crazy uh, run up in price since the bottom back in March of 2020 uh, from the pandemic. The gains that we've made have been really fantastic. And I think it's, it's fair to say that the lion's share of those gains might be behind us. And I think we might be coming into a period of lower volatility and potentially uh, reduced price gains in the NASDAQ 100. Now, if that's true, it means it's a particularly good time to be writing covered calls against those NASDAQ 100 holdings, right? Because remember, the only losing scenario is if the, the prices are going to increase very quickly and uh, exceed your strike price on those covered calls. I think that scenario is the least likely scenario go forward over the next 
six months to a year, whatever it is, for those NASDAQ 100 holdings. Uh, personally, I think we are at an all-time high that's going to result in muted gains from here. So I think we're probably going to see a sideways trading action for those stocks in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, and maybe we're going to see a decline, right? Who knows? I don't know. Um, but I think that the decline or the sideways trading scenarios are way more likely than uh, the other scenario of a really strong uh, bull run or increase in price from here. And in fact, to my mind, if we saw a really, really strong uh, uh, bull market run from here, then that would be a melt up scenario uh, to my mind. And, and really, I wouldn't want to participate in that rise because the resulting recession or crash would be uh, really, really painful. And so I, I think right now the odds favor uh, a sideways trading action for the NASDAQ 100 um, uh, constituents. And you know, another reason that I believe that may be true is I think that a lot of those uh, companies that make up a majority of the index, they're maturing, right? So if you look at the FANG stocks, they're coming to the point where they are uh, becoming older growth companies, right? They've reached that maturity standpoint where it's very, very difficult for them to expand into new markets and, and introduce new products and that kind of thing. We see this with Apple, we see it with Facebook. So, you know, it's it's quite likely to my mind that, that the growth, the crazy growth, um, the lion's share of it again, is behind us as these companies mature. And, you know, what are they gonna look like over the next decade? I don't know, but they're not uh, these crazy growth stories that they were a decade ago. Now, another point I want to make here is that uh, you don't have to buy QYLD to actually invest in this particular strategy. You can totally do this yourself. Uh, you can go out and buy the uh, stocks that you like in the NASDAQ 100, or you can just go buy the QQQ ETF that holds the, the, the same stocks as that index. And then what you can do is you can choose to write your own covered calls against those holdings. So it's very simple and very easy to do exactly what the these folks are doing in the fund uh, in your own investment account. You know, with most brokerages, it's very, very easy to get approved for selling covered calls. Uh, it's sort of considered the first step into options trading. Uh, it's very safe. You know, it, it doesn't introduce uh, any risk of loss above and beyond simply holding uh, the underlines themselves. So it's really the first baby step that almost everybody takes into options trading. So if you're interested in this idea of generating current income from holding stocks that you like, then it's a, it's a perfect time to my mind to investigate options trading, to learn a little bit more about it and actually do this yourself instead of paying a fee uh, to a company that you know has created an ETF or a financial product that does it for you. I, I think you can totally do this yourself. And you know, from a taxation standpoint, if you're doing this in a taxable account, the uh, advantages to doing it yourself, to actually writing uh, those calls uh, and, and getting that option premium in your own account, uh, for most folks in most countries, those are going to be treated as capital gains when you actually sell uh, that option premium, uh, which are typically taxed at pretty favorable rates. And so, you know, instead of just recognizing the distributions from the QYLD ETF as um, foreign sourced income, uh, selling options and recognizing the capital gains tax in your own country will often result in a lot less tax paid. So I think there's a, a, a pretty strong argument for actually doing this yourself. Uh, and, and you know, the other thing I'll say about that is taking the time now to learn about options trading, it's gonna round out your own knowledge of investing in the markets and all that kind of thing. This is a great way to do it. So I would highly recommend taking those first steps uh, down that road. Yeah, it's just another way that you can profit as an investor uh, and make a lot of additional uh, gains on your investments. Okay, so given all that, you know whether you do this yourself or whether you actually buy QYLD, I think the key here is that you need to pay attention to the current market conditions, right? So I believe that right now is an ideal time to hold this thing, right? So, uh, you know, say you bought it today and six months from now, a year from now, there's a, a recession or a correction, you know, a bear market, 20% decline uh, and then from there we're going to see a recovery right so that is the worst possible time to be holding QYLD uh, and if you're doing it yourself it's not a great time to be selling covered calls because the likelihood of a strong recovery and a lot of price appreciation is much higher if we're coming out of a recession than at any other point in time so 
to my mind right now, great time to do this, great time to buy QILD uh, after the next uh, bear market, not a great time to be holding this thing, right? So I think that, you know, if you bought it today and held it through a crash, and then you said, look, we've had a 20% drawdown, we've had a correction, we're in a bear market, it's time for me to move out of this thing uh, and simply hold the underlying stocks because there's better potential for appreciation and recovery at that point uh, without the anchor that covered calls are going to create on your portfolio. So it's it's kind of a form of market timing. And while I'm not a fan of market timing, I do think it it pays I do think it pays to pay attention to where you are in the market cycle, right? So right now, I think we can very safely say that we're, the recovery is mature, right? So the recovery off those March 2020 bottoms is mostly in, uh, and, and we're reaching you know, potentially an all-time high and potentially a peak in the market. If we see a 20% decline, a 30% decline, then I think we can safely say we're in some kind of recovery phase, right? So I don't call that market timing. I call that just being aware of what the market is doing, and I think tailoring your investment approach to what the market is doing makes a ton of sense. Um, and holding something like QILD is a choice that you need to make in light of the current market conditions. Anyway, guys, that's my story. I hope it helps you understand this investment. I hope it gives you some thoughts about how you can maybe start getting into something like this on your own or maybe the do-it-yourself version. I would highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, and please, if this helps at all, throw that video a like and I will see you all in the next one.